I uh um let's see like when I lost everything I was like damn you know and then but did you just did you just count on that steady income coming in yeah and oh yeah you, dude I mean it was it was going and all that, you know? it was going so good you know nobody thought it'd ever stop and so I bought houses Hummers Cadillacs yeah I had like a Lincoln LS a Hummer and a Cadillac like a uh uh, a CTSV, you know, like a Corvette engine Cadillac, and I had a big house, and I had uh, investment properties, and that's really how I got messed up. Is uh, I uh, was flipping properties. What's up? How are you? Good. Good. Just water and coffee for me. Water, you want lemon? Please. Creamer. Uh -huh. Please. Water. Water. It's a no-name deal. Okay. Yeah. So um, I. Uh, where was I? Yeah, you bought oh, yeah, I bought a bunch of stuff, and we are flipping properties, and we are borrowing money to flip the properties. And so when the market crashed, you know, we had so much money on properties we were trying to flip, but you couldn't flip them. Like, it was like a, a switch flipped, and you couldn't you couldn't sell them and make money. So we sold lending. Yeah. Well, we sold a bunch of them and paid it, the loan off. We didn't make anything, and it was foreclosed on a couple. Me and my dad, and then um, you and your dad were doing this together. Yeah, and then um, and then we lost everything. Uh, and then uh, I owed money on the house. I owed money on my car. I let everything go. I just let everything go back, and I had nothing. The only thing I had was a cell phone bill during that time. I had no utilities. No, I was sleeping on friends' couches and stuff. And then. Uh, you know, I didn't care. It was like, I, it was just work, you know? Like, it was a setback, but I was like, I'll just figure something out, you know? Like, I'll figure out how to come back. And then um, I went and worked on that oil rig every other week. So every other week when I was off, I would come here and try to do real estate and stuff. And that was tough, because every other week I would work days one time, and then nights one time, like six to six. And so I would go and work days and come back. And then and when I worked nights, when I came back, it took me like four days to like readjust to, yeah. you know, <laughs> like get your body ready by the time I worked nights for a week, I was just used to yeah. working at night. And now I have to adjust back. And so it took me four days to adjust to, and then so. So you lost a lot of time. Yeah, time. so like it, I, it, it was hard for me to do any real estate. Like I found that it was really hard for me to do any real estate and so I just peddled around with it but the biggest thing was I was like it was a real learning time for me like I was just trying to like figure out like what I did wrong I was trying to figure out like what I did wrong, like why did I lose everything? You know, why are like billionaires out there, you know, that continue being playing out? Why did I you lose everything? Yeah. yeah. So I read a bunch of books and like I studied a bunch of stuff. You know, like real estate books or just just, just every kind money. of book. Yeah, every kind of book. Like real estate, self help, biographies, like I was reading everything I get my hands on. And then um and then I was studying the market too, the local market, you know, and I've seen how it went so far down and I was just like in 05, I sold my last condo. Between 05 and 08, I didn't sell anything. And, uh, you know, I was like, what? Like, how can this be? You know, I'm a hardworking guy, you know, like, how is this happening? I'm smart, you know, all this stuff. Well, like, through all the research and stuff, and then there were some agents around here. Like, I watched all the agents around here, like, the ones that had to get out of the business, and then I watched the ones that, that stayed stayed in the business and a couple of them I was close to and so I would go talk to them and ask them stuff you know like how's this and how's that how are you doing this how are you selling this much right now and all, this, all yeah yeah and so I finally like it finally hit me you know like one day um, like how to reach out to people that might actually be because the market was down like 50 percent you know by the time 08 hit it was it was down, already down like 50 percent from where it was in 05 and that wasn't a hard sell you know I was like who wants beachfront property for 50 percent off you know 
And so I started selling foreclosures to buyers. You know, I didn't represent banks. I was representing people buying them. And I was like, and there was these agents that were making like 50000 a month representing the banks. And, uh, you know, a lot of people were jealous of them and stuff. And I was... <laughs> people are always jealous well, of people I, making a lot of I, I was making like uh, maybe 10000 or 15000 a month. And I was like, I'm not jealous of them. I was like, what's going to happen is, is all the people I'm representing on foreclosures, they're going to turn around years later and sell that property through me and then buy something else. And then give me referrals and all this like residual business later. I said, I'm not worried. I said... Because the, the foreclosure agents, they wouldn't answer your phone, yeah. you know, because they didn't have to. They got all the inventory. They didn't have to. They just set it all up and boo to boom you know, like people are selling their stuff for them. It's all good prices. So I was like, those people aren't going to be in business in five years, and I'm going to be number one in the area in five years. You know, like I predicted it. And that's what happened. Um, because I, cause I started building my business around relationships, you know, with, with buyers and sellers instead of just trying to do deals and not caring because when the yeah, market blew up, the deal and move it on to the next one. when the market blew up, I could make 10 calls and say and to condo owners because the prices are going up and say, who wants to make 100000 a day? And somebody would say, yeah, me, out of like 10 people, somebody would say, sure. And so I'd, sell, I'd, I'd list it and it's selling a day, close in 30 days, and then I'd never talk to that person again. They weren't buying again for 100000 more than you know than they bought it for last year. So they were, I mean, it was kind of like they were out of the market too. Like it wasn't totally, but my mindset was so just do deals, you know, I didn't care about, there were so many, so many deals, you know, you're making so much money. It's like, who cares? So when I lost everything, that was another thing I really realized, like to build something big that's going to like withstand market downturns and, you know, crashes and really anything, you, you got to be good at relationships. You can really start from nothing and like be brand new agent. And if you understand what I'm saying and you do what I say and the market crashes the day you get your license, you can still crush it, you know, because it's just people are still going to be buying and selling stuff even when the market crashes. You know, when the market crashes, buyers want to buy right now while prices are down before it goes back up. And sellers got to sell because they're in trouble. So there's things happening. You just got to switch your mindset around and like. I, I like. I got to give my brother a over you. He just started real estate like six to eight months ago. Who's he working with? Uh, Keller Williams. In Orange Beach? Uh, like fair enough down here. That's where he's at up yeah. there. So who are you with? Green Axe Orange Beach. Yeah, that's okay. I wrote two books and I have a coaching program and everything else, YouTube channel. He should check all that out. Like he should definitely read my books and stuff and check the YouTube out. Can you, can you get your books on Amazon? Do you have your uh, like your story, your testimony on there, like how you launched everything? Have you done that in either of your books? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a That's, touch on it. Yeah, I know. Like every every uh, I've read so many books, man. Like so many books. Um, what you doing for lunch? Uh, yeah. You eat real food anymore, or just stab and care stuff? Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm gonna get last time. Do you want to eat a few minutes? No, not at all. I just want. Yeah. I think I'll just do the salad bar. Okay. Do you want to do the one-time trip bowl or the endless plate? I'll probably just get one time, but the plate. Can you get one side? Oh. Flip it over. This way. And then it's uh by the pizzas. There we go. Oh, sorry. Right. No, you're fine. Um, potato waffle fries. Are you just getting crazy, or no, man, you eat like this how, normally? Yeah, that's how I eat, man. That's how I eat. So, um, when, like, I guess there was some lag time for you. Is like once you started really realizing relationships is really the magic of it. Is building a successful, successful that's going to be long lasting. Did you, did you understand right from the get go that you, it was going to be some lag time there, like? 
You just had to stick with it and keep it strong. There's no lag time. All right. I mean, as far as people are like coming back sailing and then with those particular oh, yeah. people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You got to look at everything long term. Yeah. I mean, like in your mind, you need to pretend like everything is a long term play. And then whatever short term stuff you get out of, it's just a bonus. Yeah. You know? And then when you start thinking like that, that's when everything starts happening for you. That's when, like, all the magic starts happening now. Mm -hmm. When people see that in your eyes that you don't care about a deal today, they've already decided when they're going to do something. You know, either today or next year, they already know what their plan is. So. You just gotta be there for them. Right? You just be there for them and let them know how professional, hardworking, dependable, honest, you know, all that stuff you are. And it's rare. Because most people are just trying to do deals. Yeah. Well, they see yeah. the dollar signs and they know that they have bills to pay, so in their head is. I need That's to, what's the hard part 30, about it. 30 to 45 days, if I close this today, I need this money because I got to pay for this and that. That's all I think people see. Like, and it's the same thing with us, you know, in our business. Um, I've, I've read our own guy laying on the books. I mean, I've built like a library at my house. Mm -hmm. and and like I'm slow down reading books because kind of good we, we go through phases of we go through like recruiting phases and we go through team building phases and the personal like always working on personal growth always listening to um, like a podcast personal growth podcast success podcast I got a podcast yeah I didn't even know that hmm. zero to diamond zero to diamond is my coaching program seven zero to diamond uh, podcast. Um, Zero to Diamond book. Is it Z-E-R-O? Yeah. Zero to Diamond.com is like where you can find all my podcasts, my YouTubes, my books, coaching programs, all that. My internet's so slow right now. Screenshot, so I saw remember during that downtime. That was like the funnest, that was like some of the funnest times in my life because, like, I had nothing, but I knew in my mind, like, I was like, this was the best thing to happen to me was going through that, learning all that. And, um, I read like a hundred books during that two or three year window. Now I read like, I don't read as much, hardly at all, because I'm so busy executing. Mm -hmm. Like, at some point, you have to do you yeah. know like you get you know, all this knowledge yeah how to do now now you have to apply it yeah. a lot of people read so much and do all these watch all these videos and do but they never put it into action they you know to, well a lot of people and they want to be able to say and do things perfectly so they're trying to figure out the perfect way to do all this stuff yeah. by looking at all this getting all this information and then then what happens I, I find a lot of time in our business especially is people have paralysis and analysis where they, they, they analyze things too much. Well, well, this book said this, and this person said this, and I'm on the podcast, like trying to think of the best way to do it, and then they're like paralyzed, mm -hmm. and they don't do anything at all because they're so afraid of screwing things up or not doing things the right way. Or, yeah. That happens a lot. It's like making phone calls for real estate agents. That's the number one thing, period. Like voice to voice connection trumps everything. That's why technology hasn't replaced real estate agents because there has to be that voice to voice. And real estate, people are so scared of it. You know, I mean, and then, and then too, like in today's world, they think that when they get in, they think social media is going to be the thing that blows them up, and it's not. They it's tag the thing. all these people in the houses that they live. <laughs> like, like social media is what builds your brand in real estate. Like you can build, then you can get leads and blah blah blah, but it's more of a brand building tool in real estate. Not relationship building. It, it relationship builds, yeah. That's that's your brand is your relationships and, and stuff, but and it can get the conversation started but too many people are trying to make that be the thing that connects and closes. You know, when you when you use it to connect, but you got to close, you know, you have to find out if there's a working relationship. But people are so scared. Um, that guy I was just talking to, he just joined my program. And uh, 
his thing is he's just nervous on the phone and I'm like well you have to make calls to break that you have to make enough calls to where you're numb of it you know everybody wants to be like a phone master before they make the calls but it's a chicken and egg thing like you got to make the calls to right. to get that confidence and know how the flow of the conversation is going to go and all that stuff now how did you built the team now to where like does Remax I, I know Keller Williams does this does Remax do like a um like a basically a referral process or something like you bring people into the team you earn a percentage of of whatever you know whatever you bring in or whatever from the people you bring in to their sales it's a good conversation man um yeah, I can, with Remax, I can build a team and I can structure everybody's commissions however I want. I can take 70% of their commissions if I want, 50%, 20%. I uh, tried to do a team. I started trying to do a team back in about 2011. Between 11 and 13 for two years, I went through 12 agents, I think. They're still, they're still around and they're gone. They might be around somewhere, but the thing is, is now there's two eight like there's people that do teams that crush it and do like seven million in commissions. But I don't know what the team leader makes. He might make less than what I made last year, you know. But he can say I sold seven million. I made seven million dollars last year. So who cares? What did you make? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like. I didn't do it right. Like, if I were going to build a team, I would have to have a system in place and set expectations for those team members, like, from the from the get. I didn't do that. So, like, if I wanted to, I could build a team, but to me, it's not as efficient as just working by myself with an assistant. Because people want you. So if people call me and then I send them to somebody else, it waters down the relationship. You know, and I send them to somebody who knows less than I do or it's not as professional and it's not, you know, not me, then I may lose some people along the way. See, if you lose, let's just say you lose 30 or 40 people a year off of running it like a team and referring people out. 20 or 30 people a year, you know, let's say three or four years goes by, that's 100, 200 people. That's a lot of people. That's 200 people that might be giving you repeat business, referrals, and all kinds of stuff, mm -hmm. you know, that you could retain. Okay. So I'm just not, and so what I, what, the way I did it, which was wrong, was I had agents come in and they were the really good agents and they left really quick. Like they came in and they just wanted to learn what I had to teach. And once they figured all, out my game, they left. And then you got the ones that are bad that are never going to sell anything. 90% of agents fail and they they come in and they stay with you, and but they never sell anything and they're sucking your energy dry. Like they're, they're taking all your time from you. And so I went through that with 12 <laughs> agents. Just learn, learn, learn. Not even learn, learn, learn. They won't even do what you say. You know what I'm saying? Like they ask the same questions over and over again. You see what I'm saying? And it's taking away time that I need to be spending on my clients and building my business. See, there's salesmen and managers. You know, like brokers and team leaders are managers. They don't mind managing the team and the agents and de dealing with all that. I don't think that's very lucrative, in my opinion. But I'm a salesman. Like, I want to sell. I want to be in front of my clients selling, helping them buy and sell, and now helping them take their life to the next level. That's why I did the coaching program the way I did, because it's set up where I don't spend a lot of time with the agents. I have a program where they can take it and run and get with me with questions. And now I can continue, you know, I want to be with my clients, yeah. but I still want to help people, you know. So, uh, you ever listen to Grant Cardone? Mm -hmm. Come on, there, yeah. Have you read his books? Mm -hmm. He's a, do you know his like personal story of how? Mm -hmm. Man, that's that is crazy. He uh, he's really become. You know Gary Vaynerchuk? Yeah. Well. You know, have you read his books? I haven't read his books yet, but I'll, you know, I'll listen to them. Jab, 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 right hook. 
jab, 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 right hook is a... Uh, like give, a, give, you know, and then ask. Yeah, like, like give value, give value, give value, give value, and then just ask. Don't, don't tell them they have to or whatever, but it's like you got to give a bunch of value first. You got to show them that you're worth something. And I think Grant did a good job with that, but now he's just right hooking. He's just yeah. trying to sell, 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 sell. Everything, everything is about buy this and buy that. And so I love the older Grant Cardone. I like Grant Cardone personally. Like, like I would love to go hang out with him and stuff. Um, but I think he's trying to make people buy, and his and his yeah, and his good. stuff is expensive as shit. Yeah. Well, his little conference things are very expensive. Is uh, and then he's got tons of books now. Uh, he's got CDs. He got those coaching things. Yeah. He's got a lot of that. So I think now his his focus is not make money. Selling. It's yeah. It's make money. Make money. Make to, money. To earn residual income from books yeah. and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. and then just teaching other people. Yeah, that that's his. That's his focus. I wonder how much. He's really doing in real estate right now. Like, a lot. You think he's selling as much as he, you know, as he was? Mm-hmm. Probably more. Yeah. You mean buying and selling apartments and stuff? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I think that's his main source of income. Do you do any like buying and flipping houses now? Oh yeah. yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I reached out to Cloud. And I, I said, man, who, who would you say like top most successful agent you who know, are earning like seven figures and a million or more? He gave me like a list of a few people. And when, when he said, yeah, I need to get the regular head. So he, I, I know, I know he's been doing this for a while. I didn't realize it was 16 years. <laughs> But, uh, been through hell and back. Yeah, I knew it was a while, and um, I'll tell you the reason why I asked him that, and I wanted to reach out to you. My buddy Jesse, um, he's one of my mentors in care and he he has been reading a lot of books. You know, we're in the network marketing profession. But technically, you're in the network marketing profession. You know, it's but it's not. You know, it's, it's called real estate.